Hey guys, I'm Mushu. Welcome to Mushu Samurai Stories, where I talk about some of the most interesting samurai to ever live. For my first video, I wanted to pay homage to, quote, the most feared female samurai to ever live, Tomo Gozen, or Lady Tomo. And before we get into it, just letting you know, details on this story are a little sketchy. 800 years old this story is, so be mindful of that. And it's going to get gory, so mature audiences advise. But let's get into it. Our story begins in the Shinano province of Japan in the year 1157, where the governor had a little baby girl named Tomo. Now, not much is known about her upbringing, but she must have trained extensively because by her early 20s she became an Onabu Gaisha, or a female martial arts warrior, and was said to be extremely skilled in not only hand to hand combat, but also bow and arrow, katana, and naginata spear, all while riding a horse. She was said to be very beautiful with long hair, but don't be fooled, she struck fear into the men with how deadly she was, which made her a perfect fit to train the troops and lead them into battle, because around this time tensions were rising in the Genpai Wars between the Minamoto and the Terra clans, and Tomo served under General Minamoto no Yoshinaka. The Genpai Wars were brutal, and within the Minamoto clan there were bloody battles between relatives fighting for the throne. Tomo fought in many battles for Yoshinaka, one of which Tomo led an army of 300 samurai against 2,000 Terra warriors and won. After that, Yoshinaka would send Tomo out as his first captain, wielding a massive katana and fully clad in armor. Another notable battle was the Battle of Kurikara, where they would win in a night ambush and capture the Terra capital, turning the tides of the war. Yoshinaka then got promoted to the title of Asahi Shogun by the Emperor, but this got to his head. Yoshinaka thought he could rule his own land, not under the rule of the Emperor. So he burns down the Emperor's palace and kidnaps the Emperor. He also changes his name from Minamoto no Yoshinaka to Lord Kiso. This infuriated the other generals in the Minamoto clan. So Yoshinaka's cousins, Yoshitsune and Noriori, are sent to destroy Yoshinaka. Tomo at this point has led many troops into battle and has proven herself an accomplished warrior. But when Yoshinaka's cousins roll up with their troops, I swear she was in beast mode. So Yoshinaka's cousins' forces are pouring in by the thousands over the hills. Tomo comes straight at him, leading 1,000 cavalry units into battle. And not only does she take out a good number of them with her bow and arrow, but it's said that with her mighty katana, she sliced, decapitated, and collected the heads of eight enemy soldiers, carrying them around on her horse belt as, like trophies. But even with Tomo's incredible effort, Noriori's forces continued to pour in by the thousands, just killing off so many of her troops, till she looked around and all of her soldiers either have been killed or ran off. Just then, Tomo's horse is killed. She's thrown on the ground, covered in blood, and surrounded by enemy troops. But somehow makes it out as the lone survivor of the battle and makes it back to Yoshinaka, who is holed up in a little hut with just him and a, another mighty samurai who is Tomo's brother, Amai. Again, surrounded by the enemy, they make their last stand, and Amai and Tomo hold off thousands of forces for a small amount of time. But when they know it's over, Yoshinaka turns to Tomo, and he says, you need to leave. Why? Because he said he was embarrassed to die in the presence of a woman. Now, Amai, Tomo's brother, was his best friend, and he said he wanted to die with him, so he told Tomo, you need to leave. But Tomo was not about to go out without a bang, okay? As she got on the horse to flee, 30 horse units arrived coming from behind. Leading them was a very strong, renowned warrior named Honda no Haushiro Moroshige, who was known all over the province for his great strength. Well, Tomo rides directly up to him, disarms him, grabs him by the collar, rips him off of his horse, one-armed, brings him into a headlock, okay? Twists his head with so much force that she rips his head straight clean off his body and his body drops to the ground. She's now holding his head. All of his soldiers stop dead in their tracks and they just let her ride right past them. They do not want to mess with that because I guess it was a great dishonor in Japan to be killed 
by a woman in that day. You would bring great dishonor to your family. Nobody wanted to mess with that. So she rides off in the distance, taking her helmet off, taking her armor off, but still keeping the head. And she just rides off into the distance, and not much is known about her after that point. But it's said she became a Buddhist nun and died peacefully at the age of 90. Which I think would be pretty sweet if she was the best and gave it up for a life of peace. Pretty respectable. But all in all, she went down as, quote, a warrior worth a thousand, ready to confront a demon or a god, mounted or on foot. And I really think she deserves that. And I think it was a pretty interesting story. So let me know what you guys think and get ready for the next videos. Slice that like button.